Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, all right, let's go through some data and then I'll take some questions. Uh, no new deaths uh, over the last 24 hours, so uh, really good news uh, there. Uh, looking at uh, tests, uh, we received 1,862 diagnostic tests back since yesterday. Our seven day rolling average for diagnostic tests uh, is 0 0.87. Uh, again, at times our data will be different from New York forward. Uh, think about a, a college student uh, that uh, is from Onondaga County, lives in another, uh, goes away to college, test positive. His home address is Onondaga County. That starts out as our case, but then that will get transferred uh, to the county of which they are uh, actually residing and where uh, where they're uh, going to be, uh, where their school is essentially. So these things are happening more with college students being back. So uh, data is a little bit different uh, each day. Uh, when we look at uh, the reality that uh, now all of our local colleges, uh, our NBT Bank uh, Stadium testing, our uh, our plan moving forward for proactive testing in schools. All this is uh, done with saliva tests. Uh, over the last seven days, uh, an additional 7,172 saliva tests have been performed in Onondaga County. Uh, when you add in all of the tests, both diagnostic and saliva tests, our seven day rolling average of positive tests is 0 0.58. Uh, so all the tests in the community uh, zero point five eight percent so good good numbers uh, overall uh, you know we, we have uh, you know college back uh, it's been back uh, getting uh, students back in person learning uh, you know essentially uh, we would have seen any real upticks from Labor Day uh, weekend uh, we would have probably have seen upticks right now uh, we haven't really seen anything uh, you know, we had, you know, an occasional cluster of cases that will drive your data for a couple days. Uh, but overall, really in, in, in good position. Uh, looking at hospitalization numbers, 10 uh, of our residents are in the hospital related to COVID-19. Uh, one of them is in the ICU. Let's keep uh, that person in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, six Caucasian, three African American. Uh, one individual has not shared their, uh, their demographic information with us. Uh, looking at positive cases, uh, 4,093 positive cases since March 16th in Onondaga County. Uh, that's 23 new cases since yesterday. Uh, looking at the 23, one was travel related. Seven are household contacts. That's kind of a bigger number for household contacts, but uh, that's a reality we know is that uh, if uh, you have COVID, you have loved ones, you don't properly isolate um, there's higher risk for people in your household to uh, certainly uh, get the virus. One senior facility, 14 community spread, of which two are known sources. When we uh, look at out of the 23, three out of the 23 are uh, college students or faculty. Six out of the 23 are school age children. Five out of those six cases were our remote learners so they are not in buildings. Uh, and out of the five, three of them are from the same household. So essentially you have one household uh, where the family came down with uh, the, the virus. Um, and uh, the one in school case was the one that was reported on at Fayetteville Manlius, uh, even though that student w had not been in school for over a week. So uh, th that's a breakdown of the numbers uh, there. Looking at, uh, Who's been impacted by the virus? 2,343 female, 1,750 male, 415 under 19, 847 in their 20s, 531 in their 30s, 488 in their 40s, 605 in their 50s, 444 in their 60s, 318 in their 70s, 281 in their 80s, and 164 in their 90s. Uh, the school testing, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this because um, we, have quite frankly, uh, didn't expect this much demand. Uh, and so uh, the couple of hiccups that we're working through. Uh, but again, I want to thank Upstate Medical um, for taking this on in partnership with us. The saliva test uh, 
is uh, a test that parents are more comfortable with getting, having their children uh, participate in. Uh, and because of that, we're receiving lots of calls. Uh, you could get a diagnostic test done uh, and most likely get the, the same turn time, but we knew that parents would feel more comfortable uh, bringing uh, their, their, their child for a saliva test, and uh, th that's holding true. Uh, in, in addition to that, the school districts are learning how to deal with this in the buildings, um, and as we work through this, we'll, get, we'll all get better at it. Uh, but certainly, uh, there, there are cases with uh, kids that are being uh, sent home for really anything, uh, and that leads to more pressure on, on the, the program. So uh, we appreciate everyone's uh, patience with the registration process. Uh, I wanna just give everybody a couple uh, points here. Uh, Upstate is on track to answer 6,000 calls this week. Uh, prior to adding the MBT Bank Stadium site, their average weekly call volume was 1,200. So uh, Upstate's now uh, looking at uh, beefing up the staffing uh, for that and as well uh, for the demand on the new FDA approved saliva test. Uh, because, and, and that's good news uh, because that's going to create jobs here in our own community. Um, but certainly there's other complications with this. Uh, minors, uh, testing minors adds a layer of complexity to obtaining results. Children from 12 to 17 years old have to consent to allow a parent or guardian access to their medical record results. Uh, and so we've set up a MyChart account for these, uh, these kids to be able to go on to. But again, so if we're calling you uh, and your, your child isn't there for the results, it's a HIPAA violation. So there's all these complexities with this. Uh, we understand that people have called and have waited a long time on the phone. Uh, they're beefing up that. The reason is because of the demand that uh, we, we push this infrastructure out quickly uh, so we could meet, meet the demand. We just haven't, uh, we did not anticipate uh, how much demand there would be um, related to this. So we ask you to, uh, again, give us a little bit of time to work out the kinks, but the reality is, is that there's been over 100 uh, kids tested each day uh, at the site. Good news, Monday through Wednesday, over 350 people tested at the site uh, with the saliva test, no positives. So all these kids had symptoms with something other than COVID. Uh, so uh, that is good news. Today, we, I know we had over 100 uh, appointments uh, at MBT Bank Stadium as well. Uh, wanna congratulate, uh, again, Dr. Middleton uh, and uh, their Upstate's partnership with uh, Quadrant Biosciences uh, Upstate and Quadrant Biosciences are uh, using similar technology that led to the announcement uh, related to the first saliva-based test by the FDA approval. But also, uh, last year, uh, they developed the world's first saliva-based test for autism, all right here in Onondaga County. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, it bodes well for our community that uh, they continue to innovate uh, and lead uh, in the pandemic with us. So it's a lot of information uh, that we just gave out uh, related to the virus. Uh, happy to take questions. Yeah, so as far as obtaining results, that's one of the uh, challenges. Uh, normally, uh, if you're under 12, we can call, talk to a parent, t give them a verbal, uh, but that doesn't work unless we, uh, the uh, consent of the 12 to 17 year old gives us that. Uh, if, the, if the child gives consent for their parents to get the information we can, that creates paperwork challenges, right? Data, uh, data challenges, uh, and that's backed up. That's why we can't have people just showing up at the site uh, as one of the reasons. That's why we need the appointments. Um, but there is a portal. Uh, they create a MyChart account uh, that they can go and check the, uh, the results on. 
Um, but that's one of the, some of the questioning and feedback we've gotten. That's one of the things that we've heard, Jim. Uh, others, as I'm calling uh, and I'm waiting, the reason is is because uh, it's staffed up uh, for essentially 1,200 calls a week. This week we got 6,000 there. Uh, so we just need to, uh, with Upstate, get, get through this. We, we're, we didn't anticipate uh, because these are symptomatic kids. Insurance is going to cover this test anywhere. Um, but we knew that saliva would be the preference for uh, these kids, but it seems like every kid, almost every single one of them that's being sent home uh, is, is coming here, uh, and so that's creating a little bit of a, a, a backlog that we need to uh, properly staff up for. We, we pushed them hard, uh, my emergency management team, I pushed them pretty hard with Upstate to get this done on, get going so we had it ready, uh, and we did. And again, we're, we're getting the job done for the most part, but we're building capacity so we can do more per day. Uh, the backlogs of call times and wait times are gonna get better. Yeah, they're working, yeah, yeah, yes, that's one of the things that they're working through now. Uh, and uh, again, they're, the, before uh, when we were doing different uh, testing, uh, mobile testing sites, uh, we had different partners that had different ways to obtain things. Uh, and Syracuse Community Health Center, you, you show up, they have their own process. Um, we're working through all of this this test now, because they're symptomatic, they can, Upstate can get insurance reimbursement for these tests. So part of that's part of this process too. So uh, it, we're, we're getting through it. Week one uh, is, has been uh, successful. Uh, week two will be more successful as we work through some of the procedural issues. Do you know what the wait times are uh, now to get that, the test results back? Well, with? it's been 24 hours, if not quicker. Uh, so again, we know uh, today is Thursday. Uh, we know everybody from yesterday uh, negative, everybody on Tuesday, Monday negative too. So uh, the turn times are fantastic. Um, and that's, that's one of the benefits of having this here. Uh, now the other thing that it's important for parents and we get it and the local health departments are pushing this with New York State. Right now the rule is uh, to get back to school, if you have symptoms, uh, you need a negative test and essentially a doctor's note. Um, these are not the county rules, these are the state rules. Uh, we are pushing, uh, and Dr. Gupta has been pushing with her peers, uh, that it's an either or. If you go, if you have a, a child who's asthmatic, uh, they go to their doctor, their doctor knows them, they say, I'm not going to give them a COVID test because it's asthma, that note in Dr. Gupta's opinion, should be enough to let them back into school. Right now, that's not the case. Um, so again, that's another step in the process right now. That as a community, we just got to get through. We've never, uh, we've never been here before. So um, we're getting here, and so, so far we've had a pretty successful rollout to schools uh, as well. Um, voluntary furloughs, uh, what is the status on that? Do you know how many people have volunteered so far for that? I think the number is still 11 is my understanding. I haven't heard if there's been any more that have come forward over the past few days um, that uh, we, we had. And on a voluntary furlough, we have to agree to the furlough, uh, uh, obviously with uh, the number of people that we uh, no longer have in the building working uh, over 540 positions that we had filled last year. Uh, sometimes we, we might not be able to let people take a voluntary furlough uh, because we don't have anyone else to do their job. So um, this is, uh, you know, that's part of it. I think the first 11 we agreed to, uh, but it, it really depends on who, who uh, what the person does, and do we have the ability to make up that work now at this point? How long until you know then who to cut and who, like when is the Yeah, so um, if you think about when we're looking at right now uh, our workforce, uh, food, shelter, safety is the way we're looking at 
uh, the departments that we're trying to uh, preserve uh, and make whole. Phase one of our adjustments, which led to 86 positions total. Out of the 86 positions, essentially 35 of them came from early retirements. We put that back out there. That helped big time. Uh, that those would have been folks that would have been furloughed or, or, or laid off. Uh, not the same people, but 35 of their colleagues, right? Because there's seniority. Um, and so uh, that was very helpful. We had about 14 positions that over the last three, four weeks had become vacant uh, through normal processes, right? People take other jobs. Uh, then we had seven layoffs uh, for positions that we just can't afford in 2021. And then we had 19 compulsory furloughs, uh, which are these are positions we want to bring back uh, in 2021. And then we had 11 um, voluntary furloughs. Uh, so we have made up some of the gap through all these efforts. And now October 6th and the 8th, we get two sales tax payments that week. Uh, if the sales tax uh, goes in the right direction or stays on our projections, um, we, we probably won't make any more moves uh, then. Uh, if it goes in the wrong direction, um, we probably have to do some things. Uh, the shopping town um, gave 30-day notice to vacant um, to, to tenants to get out of there in 30 days. Yeah. What, what do you have to say? Yeah, no, no, look at shopping town mall, Moonbeam, whoever owns it now. They, they, they keep on transferring this property to other entities that they own. And uh, everybody that's followed this story knows we took these guys head on. They weren't paying their taxes, uh, refused to invest in the property. Tenant after tenant leaves in a, in a building which is in uh, some of the most affluent suburbs in central New York, yet somehow they can't make it work when there's retail going up all around them. So uh, clearly I'm not a fan. Uh, and what we did is we took them into court. We beat them in court. We kept on pushing them. We were going to take the property um, via back taxes. And then they filed for bankruptcy. So it's in bankruptcy court. The bank's bankruptcy judge has been reviewing the case. Uh, they have been making payments to us, $25,000 a month. Um, and uh, I'm surprised by this. One, they never reached out to us about checking their filtration systems in the building. So the building's not even eligible to be open. Um, anyways, they've been taking money from these folks. Many of these people have been paying rent. Um, and then they just get a 30-day notice, I think. So I don't know if it's legal, uh, what they're doing. We have our law department uh, looking into it and working with the proper authorities to see if it's even legal within the governor's executive orders. Uh, certainly it makes no sense if you're in bankruptcy court saying, I can't af afford uh, all the taxes because I'm not doing well business-wise. Uh, so please let me restructure uh, everything and re restructure who I owe money to um, because uh, I, the expenses are more than my revenue. Well, to then get rid of your revenue, I mean, come on. So uh, these folks, who knows what game they're up to, but uh, we'll push them, and we have pushed them. Uh, th there'll be resolution at some point on this. Yeah, so the, uh, they do do it at, well, they re register the children at uh, the site. That's part of the process when you set the appointment. Um, and then you create this online portal where then the results will go to the portal. Uh, and we're looking at ways to further streamline uh, that with staff and, and calls too. So, uh, but that's the process when they go. They're actually going through a registration process when they show up. Uh, and, uh, and there may be some information taken when they set the appointment as well. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, um, that's why we just can't have people walking up uh, w without appoint you know, setting up an appointment. They do. They do call. You call 315-464-2582, and you select option four. And any child, uh, certainly under 18, must have uh, a adult uh, who can provide consent with them, a parent and or a guardian.
How do you think that's helped families and school children in the last week? Well, I think it's it's helped 350 of them, you know, essentially get quick tests, uh, and it's going to help more and more. And I think, uh, again, in the beginning of the year, as the, the medical teams in the buildings uh, are getting used to this and, and feeling we're all learning, right? We have our first case. We, we have our first quarantine. We quarantine probably more kids at the beginning than we probably would four months from now because we're going to learn from it to see if any of the kids had real exposure. Um, at some point, some of these kids, for some of the symptoms, um, maybe the schools won't be as quick to send them out of the buildings, right? Uh, if they're lethargic, uh, they might have been up too late the night before. Um, but we're going to get through that, right? These things are happening. Um, and so overall, it, it's clear, crisp communication on where these families can go. Uh, we just got kind of inundated with uh, more, uh, more kids uh, being sent home than what we thought was going to happen in week one. So now we have to uh, upgrade uh, uh, the infrastructure, streamline processes. Uh, we're working uh, with Upstate to do that. What have you talked about on the control room calls recently? Yeah, so uh, still talking and pushing about the infrastructure. Uh, I've been told that our saliva data is going to get updated into New York forward, um, which is important because then you I don't got to break out uh, all of the testing in the community like we used to have to do before New York Forward uh, because, you know, when people see numbers, they there's anxiety with it in this process. So um, it's important that they see all the numbers and have all of them, not just some of them, right? And so that tells the story. And some days it's a good story. Some days it's a story where you're concerned. Other days it might be a bad story, right? But the numbers are the numbers. Um, so, but that was important for us because we're not going to be, all of our testing initiatives are going to be saliva driven going forward. Um, that's going to be what the universities are all doing. So when you have 50% of your tests in your community being done with one, uh, one type of test, that data needs to be incorporated into the overall data. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've, we've been pushing. We put forward a, what we thought was a thoughtful process on trying to get the hospitality industry uh, activated more. Uh, we've had some conversations with uh, the State Department of Health. Uh, our take is they're probably not going to do anything on that until uh, they got a couple more weeks of school under their belts um, to see uh, if there's uh, true upticks or clusters that happen from schools. Does it surprise you that today there were six school-aged children cases when that number seems a lot higher than what we've seen in the past? No, I mean, three from one household, right? Um, you know, and uh, I, I think now that people are, uh, kids are back to school, parents are more uh, likely to get their kids tested now, uh, and, uh, or if they're going in uh, to the doctor's office and, getting a flu shot, uh, I, I, you know, there, there's a chance that testing will happen. 26% of the cases were asymptomatic, right? So these are uh, out of 23, what is that, uh, five, six, seven cases where they got a test somehow, not because they were sick. Um, and so uh, that, you know, that might have just been a screening with a college student. That could have been uh, three out of the six school-age kids, too. I uh, went there for something else. and. Uh, got tested for COVID and they came back asymptomatic. So, um, you know, it's w that's a part of the population that, again, think about it as a parent. It's not a, it's tough when you're going to get a strep throat swab done on your kids, right? You, you know, for me, I got to promise ice cream and all sorts of things. Um, to do, <laughs> to do these nasal swabs, Trish, this is, parents didn't want to do this. So now they got the saliva test. So parents are more, uh, more apt to get their kids tested now, and that's a good thing. Remote learners, so they did not have interaction in buildings. You keep touting these saliva tests. Have you tried it out yourself? I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. Now, as soon as I have time, 
uh, I'm going to, uh, and I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, but it's it's a, I've seen it, and it looks looks good. It looks good how they're doing it. So maybe I'll uh, I'll go down with some of the kids one of these days and get one done myself down at MBT Bank. Did you pay your parking ticket that you had in this amnesty program? I did. Ironically enough, it had multiple relatives of my name on it. So I don't know if it was mine or a cousin of mine. Um, but uh, I'm not going to throw my cousin under the bus right now, whose name was on it too. But it's paid. It's paid. Uh, I made a nice donation to the city of Syracuse. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's the last one I'll have to make. Other questions? Okay, uh, thank you everybody. We will see everybody back here on Monday.